Hello, it's Brett from Harper's Podcast. So as you've seen on my page, I am a support worker. Now I haven't had or created an opportunity to really talk about my experience. So there's a bit of a timeline of events with regards to how I decided to get into support work. So I'll try not to bore you too much with details, but essentially, as we're all completely aware, the whole planet went through a state or a series of lockdowns during COVID. I'm located in Melbourne, Melbourne, Victoria, because there is a Melbourne in the US. It's in uh, Florida, I think it is. Melbourne, from a suburb of, or it's a suburb somewhere in the States in America. So Melbourne, Victoria in Australia, um, we had a sequence of lockdowns that were quite severe, a little bit more than in most places on the planet. And basically what had happened was in 2020, our government created opportunities uh, with regards to added funding to courses for those people that were un had unfortunately lost their jobs due to lockdown. Or, you know, so they could uh, upskill or reskill in or learn a new skill overall once lockdowns were lifted. I was very fortunate though to be working through COVID. Uh, my, or my, the, I was working as a gym equipment installer. Yeah, we were able to restructure our efforts to accommodate uh, the general public, but also, yes, we I was still very fortunate to be working full time. And I was contemplating changing careers overall for a certain amount of time. And COVID kind of uh, facilitated that with regards to how uh, people's mental health overall long term may have been affected. So there were statistics being flown around that, you know, mental health services over the next 10 or 15 years are going to increase tenfold, like 150% to 300% uh, of what they are now, even though there is a strain on the services <laughs> as it is. So with that in mind, I was in the process of doing a diploma in counselling for numerous years via correspondence and I kind of let that fall to the wayside purely based on the fact that the way the course was structured really didn't lend itself for me to be more accountable with regards to doing classes and handing in assessments so yeah in a nutshell I was a bit lazy let's just say that I'll be honest all right you got me so <laughs> From that point, I ended up seeing in 2020 that there are some course providers, and one of those was called Gen U, just the letter U, not, not Y O U. And yeah, Gen U were offering some courses in, to do a cert for in mental health. Gen U had various payment opportunities available, which were either pay for the course up front via instalments, or if you were fortunate enough, you could get this new uh, government funding to actually. Uh, pay for it in full which would have been great so inquired to the course had to fulfill a certain criteria with regards to life experience and your you know what you what you wanted to get out of the course overall which would then make it easy enough you know to see if you were capable of doing it so that was fine I was I was successful enough to pass all their criteria but at the same time with job uncertainty associated with COVID I didn't make the decision to, to start the course because yeah, my financial situation at that point was uncertain because who knows how long my job would last for and if I'll be able to pay for the course on top of all the other expenses that we have, all the other daily living expenses. So I let it I let it slide for a bit. I, I said, you know, I'll, I'll put it on hold for it and I'll reevaluate within the within the next six to twelve months and see how we go. So fast forward to 2021, the opportunity arose again where the funding had increased inquired about the course from the same provider then I was able to see if I could apply for the funding I was approved for that so I said yes let's let's get it let's get it done so from that point on it was studying for a total of about 10 months uh, yeah 10 months with a commitment of one night a week via zoom one Saturday morning per month from memory so whether that's changed, I don't know, but that actually worked quite well for me. Uh, on top of that, you would probably invest about another hour to two hours per night doing the course, and that's how, that's, that's how it works. So the reason why it worked for me was it made me more accountable with regards to 
into studying because the assessments had due by dates, which I worked towards and was successful in doing all of that. Once you get through a certain portion of it, within the six month time of doing the course, you are then have the opportunity to do placement because you need to fulfill 80 hours on the job placement um, as a support worker and shadow in other support workers as well. With that in mind, Gen U would reach out to their existing providers for students. Otherwise, you could source one on your own. But I ended up leaving it towards the end where I ended up sourcing somewhere from my own and was fortunate enough to come on board with them and halfway through doing placement, I was offered employment. I was extremely fortunate enough to make the decision to then hand in a resignation from my previous job to then start this. Now, the only issue with the taking the offer was more the fact that the industry overall for support workers appears to be more associated with casual based work work hours and full-time positions are very rare with regards to just the nature of the job where you'll get clients that will client circumstances will change or you know some, someone may change you know a provider they may not be happy with the service there'll be cancellations or someone may pass away these are the type of things you need to take into consideration so that was my experience with regards to doing the course um, in terms of the course quality I personally I can't speak for other providers, but GenU were, were great. The actual tutors were amazing, extremely knowledgeable, and were available quite a lot, usually between business hours, uh, which is understandable, but you know, you, you could contact anyone via email otherwise and get a response. I highly recommend it uh, as a bit of a launching pad into the industry. That's kind of how I chose to tackle it at the very start. Earlier on, I was doing a course in in counseling and at the time you know back then i was pretty much unsure about what i really wanted uh you know long term but now working in the industry just at a, like a base level as a support worker your, your role is quite important um you know it's quite it's it's almost like a infantry infantry in the army like they're, they're the first point of call they're the ones that are on the ground you know they're the one fighting the fight uh whilst everyone in strategic you know doing strategy they're in the offices which is which you know in mental health terms it's or industry terms it's always like the clinicians tend to be a little bit more uh you know, they're doing the assessments and overall treatments and you're given the opportunity to see how these clients present at face value and what their capabilities are. So sometimes you'll be presented with a, a BSP, which is a behavior support plan. And this has information on the client themselves and the history of what they're presented with. And then it's up to you to kind of really work out your approach to them, build rapport, yeah, get them out into the community and assist them where, where necessary or where you can so you'll have good and bad days and that's how it is but in terms of the course the course was was quite good it, it really created a foundation to some uh, complex mental health issues like schizophrenia PTSD anxiety and depression and what I found is that a lot of people that were doing the course the other the other students they um, had a lot of life experience as as I did myself with regards to certain mental health issues so you were able to feel protected and safe if you chose to disclose some of your personal information to them I remember when I started the course it, it clearly isn't for everyone when I started doing it we would do a zoom session and there was honestly probably about 25 students in the on the zoom session and as time went on by the end there was about six there was about six of us so and they were all from different fields some people actually worked as a uh, recruiting officers for employment agencies um, somebody else was working in a bank and then some subsequently wanted to get into the industry so it's it's all about you could apply a lot of what you learn into existing industries and be at the forefront of you know, human resources for, for an organization that that may be lacking in, in that sense. So depending on how, it's really about how, how accessible you want to become, what type of change you want to make, not only for yourself, but for the people within your community. You're constantly learning because of depending on how accessible you become in your area, you'll have to advocate for your client and assist them in finding services 
in their area. There's always something to learn, and that's that's the beauty of it, I think, with um, the job, and the fact that you know, at any age, we should have the capacity to, to learn and keep learning, and it, and it's it's just a, a great thing to experience. We take a lot for granted, 